Boulder's top stories this week. The new Valmont Bike Park opens for riders, council hears from Energy Future consultants, and Boulder Public Library welcomes a new director. Hi, I'm Natalie Wood. It's a ride that Boulder cycling enthusiasts have been waiting to take for months, and on June 11th, they got their first chance to journey through the newly developed Valmont Bike Park. The City of Boulder Parks and Recreation Department's newest park has already been labeled as an outstanding bike park by the International Mountain Biking Association. And at Saturday's grand opening, cyclists got to see just how it earned that title. Soaring bikes and flying dust are a dead giveaway that the Valmont Bike Park is finally open. And Boulder Parks and Recreation Director Kirk Kincannon says the newly renovated park has earned Boulder yet another title. One of the fittest cities in the nation, one of the happiest cities in the nation, so now one of the most coolest cities in the nation with the Boulder Mountain uh, Bike Alliance work that we've done with the community and then now this great new facility at Valmont Bike Park, so it's pretty cool. Pretty cool seems to be the community consensus for Valmont Bike Park. The 40 acres of trails have been packed since its grand opening on June 11th. And it seems that a few skinned knees haven't stopped people from getting in on the action. I have never seen happier faces. It's incredible. It's almost like the first time the kid opens up a Christmas present and it's this first Christmas that he realizes what's happening. So uh, Saturday when we opened the park, I bet we had two or 3,000 people out here and I did not see a frown. Even after the falling down and skin, knees and elbows, it was incredible. So it was uh, just one huge community celebration. It was a great experience. The community has been looking forward to getting a bike park in the city since 1996, when the land was acquired with a ballot initiative. The Parks Department sought community-wide input in the project, and construction began in March 2010. Ken Cannon says the park was designed for the use of everyone. We have a taut trike area that is geared for those those kids that aren't on two wheels yet, so really for the, the, the toddler age, two to three year olds. Uh, we go all the way up from beginner to expert as far as the trails. Boulder's Parks and Recreation Department hopes to see the park's success continue as it hosts future classes and events. But most of all, they would like to see the continued use and enjoyment of the community. The 40-acre bike park at Valmont City Park is located at the corner of Valmont and Airport Roads in Boulder. Valmont Bike Park is open daily from dawn to dusk. Anyone is welcome to take a ride. The opening of Valmont Bike Park isn't the only reason for cyclists to tune up their bikes and dust off their helmets. Bike to Work Day is just around the corner and registration is now open. On Wednesday, June 22nd, workers are encouraged to take an alternate form of transportation to work by riding their bike, taking the bus, walking, or carpooling. Bike to Work Day represents a statewide grassroots effort to educate commuters about the benefits of using two wheels to get to work. Bikers are eligible to win great prizes and will receive a free breakfast for their participation. Visit biketowork2011.org to register. Top industry specialists took center stage in the ongoing energy future discussions this week, telling City Council that the financial model for the creation of a locally owned power utility is built on sound assumptions and solid estimates. The model estimates that the city could purchase Excel's distribution system for about $121 million, purchase power for about $59 million a year, operate a facility for $13 million a year, and repay bond-related debt with about $25 million each year, while still having emergency reserves plus profit. Under this scenario, Boulder's customers would pay slightly less for their electricity than what they would pay if the city stayed with Excel Energy. Milton Lee, who retired as CEO for San Antonio's CPS Energy last year, and Mike Hubbard of the financial engineering company in Maine, conducted a peer review of the research done by another city-hired consultant. All of the city's consultants determined that a locally owned power utility is a feasible option. BOLA has an opportunity to create its own model from the ground up to be what you want it to be. Any improvements can be phased in over whatever time frame you set. You can proceed at your own pace, considering impacts such as future rate increases, issuance of revenue bonds depending on the bond market, use of energy efficiency and conservation, and renewables and what impacts they have on future electric bills. In other words, what fits for BOLA is what gets impl implemented over time. 
The consultants acknowledged that some of the estimated costs could be higher, but said the cost model provides for some wiggle room and that even with some increases, the city could still buy the system and keep rates where they are now. Lawyer Joel Paisner pointed out that even after a vote, there would be several opportunities for the city to change its mind before issuing the actual bonds. The estimated costs would become firm costs as a result of negotiations and possible court rulings before a final council decision. If you'd like to know more about the options under consideration, please visit the Energy Future website and participate in a June 28th community forum. The forum will start at 6 p.m. at East Boulder Community Center. The Boulder Public Library is happy to welcome a new library director to town. Valerie McGinnis assumed the important position on June 13th. City staff and members of the Library and Arts Commissions selected Valerie out of 78 applicants in a national search. As the new library director, Valerie says she's excited to explore ways the Boulder Public Library can be even more relevant to community members, and she's thrilled to be able to do that in Boulder's surroundings. The scenery is beautiful. Uh, I'm not uh, at all disappointed with the mobility and uh, being able to get around uh, freely and easily here in Boulder. I'm also impressed so very much with the friendliness of you know, the residents here in town, uh, the friendliness of the staff, people at the city, and it's just been a very positive experience for me all around, and I'm just very lucky to, to be here. I want to make sure that I am fully knowledgeable about the library and all the things that are offered, program services, and also what where the library uh, is within the city of Boulder, and having the opportunity and working with staff to further uh, make aware of all of our opportunities for the residents. So I'm, there's a lot to do, and I'm sure that uh, working together will accomplish that. As the former director of Library and Cultural Services in Mission Viejo, California, Valerie has more than 20 years' experience in city and county libraries. That's all the time we have for this week. You can connect with Inside Boulder News on Facebook by submitting news tips and questions. Just search for City of Boulder Channel 8. I'm Natalie Wood. Stick around for more Inside Boulder next.